Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. And Kevin, today we learn a little bit about podcasts. Yeah, podcasting and Catholic media, mm. and it's going to be great. We have uh, Mac and Catherine Barron here. They're going to be talking about their podcast, Catholic in a Small Town, and we're going to learn more about that and talk about all the media that's taking place and how it can help the church. And we'll hear a little news too, won't we? Yeah, a little bit. Always <laughs> want to always hear a little bit of news. All that and much more right now on This Is The Day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today. On This Is The Day, I'm joined by my wonderful friend, Kevin Nelson, uh, that, but not Father E. That's great. That's a, that's a new word that you uh, mentioned mm -hmm. last week. And yes. I, I think it works great. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, I like, I like it. The wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Because you're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and God loves me. <laughs> and absolutely. You know what, though? Father E is not here because he is traveling to St. Louis. He probably is watching us on the iPad right now. I bet, I bet yeah, you Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure. So how are you doing, Father Ray? Good to see you. But he's traveling to St. Louis to speak at a conference, and he has been working on this for a while. Yep. So he has this whole PowerPoint presentation ready to go. And he, as you know, he takes this very seriously. That's right. It's great. And, and with the new media that is available, the technology that's available out there, he was able to uh, put together a great presentation, and uh, he has that nice new iPad that he takes around with him as well. So we're going to be talking about the new media and how that could help in uh, getting the uh, church's message, message out there. Um, well, one of our on. guests. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I guess we're going to talk about podcasting. But we, you know what? It is interesting because today we use media in so many different ways, and the church has to be out there. And I think by you just watching this program, wherever you're watching it, whether it be up in Canada, the United States, the islands, uh, or all over the world, wherever you're watching this, it's media. Now, you can not only watch it on television, on your television station. Maybe you're watching it on the computer right now, the iPad, your phone. This is just the Internet. There's so many different ways you can use the media, but we need to use the media. We need to get the message out there. So I think it's just so important. I, I, and I think that we try to do it in many different ways, trying to be flexible. And we try to do it in a good way as well. And uh, I hope know, so. And <laughs> And with that, um, too, we, we, we get uh, recognized every once in a while uh, for doing it uh, in a good way. And uh, did we win some awards lately? Or we something? won eight awards. Eight awards. We wow. just got word that we've won eight awards for some of the programs we do, which include Clear Voice. Congratulations to you. And Way of Beauty. Congratulations Thanks, to yeah. you and David and, of course, Christine and John. Um, and the whole crew here at Catholic TV yeah. because it is a crew effort. Wow, Richard Brown, congratulations for Wow. Uh, what else did we win for? We just, too many. I don't <laughs> know. We, got eight, we won eight awards. We're going to have to get a new case. We're going to have to, a new case. A We're going to have to get a case <laughs> because the trophies are tiny. You know, it's, we have trophies everywhere, in all honesty. If we look around, there's these trophies uh, Gabriel's, Pixies. Uh, tellies. Yeah, and that, actually, that's um, that's a place where uh, Bonnie is at now, I believe, as well. The uh, Catholic Media Convention mm -hmm. um, in Pittsburgh, and they have the Gabriel Awards at the end of that. And uh, I believe she's talking to uh, a person that uh, we have seen before, uh, a great guy, Monsignor Ty, um, from uh, one of the Pontifical Commissions on uh, Social Communications. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking and, and finding out about uh, what he's doing and what he's up to. And that's ever-changing as we're, we're talking about new media and social media and how the Vatican is involved in that as well and how important that is. And uh, we'll get some of his thoughts on that as well. And talking about great media, you know who else she's talking to up there? You, uh, you don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm going to surprise you right All now. Right. But I'm not going to surprise our friends in <laughs> Canada. Monsignor, uh, Father Rosica. Oh, great. Father great. Rosica is up there, and we're going to interview Father Rosica, a great friend of Catholic television. You know, it's, it's interesting because we, are, uh, we have great synergy between Salt and Light and Catholic TV. Um, it really is a wonderful thing to behold, and we share things, and we work together, and they're a great group up there, Gita and the whole gang and Father Rosica. But so he's up there, so we'll be interviewing him too. I have a confession. Okay. Now, right. you're not Father Reed, but that's I cannot, okay. I cannot absolve you, Jay, but please feel free to open up. So I came down to the set today, 
And Peter uh, said, okay, well, let's go over letters. I said, okay, where are the letters? So I, I don't have the letters. And Tim had left, Tim was in charge of the letters. So he left the letters out here on Wednesday because Tim had gone away. Well, the cleaners came. Uh -oh. The cleaners took the letters. So we have the letters that are on the screen, but we oh, literally okay. don't have them. So here's my problem, okay. and it's a bigger problem maybe for you. Okay. We have to read off of a screen way, so you can't see it, but probably for me, it's probably 10 feet or more away. For Kevin, it's probably about 15 feet away. So we're going to try to read these off the yeah. screen. Do you have your reading glasses? Uh, you know what? I do better far away, so this is probably oh, actually wow. better for me, okay, but it's still very small. So we're going to do our best, and you have the first letter. You ready? Okay, yeah, a little bit of a test here. Let's see what Let's we can do. do. All right. And our first letter is right there on the screen. It's a long one. And uh, I just returned from a winter vacation in California, being a daily participant with the Catholic TV Mass. I was thrilled to be able to continue this practice via the Internet. What a joy it is to continue daily Mass via the Internet and knowing it's available 24-7. The family I stayed with was amazed at the broadcast and promised to keep up this Internet participation. And that is, uh, uh, you know, it's a testament to uh, being able to be out there uh, worldwide web and um, being able to access that. And that's great to be able to be so on vacation and, and yeah. check in. Yeah. And what we're talking about, too, using the Internet. And we did, it almost sounds like we planned that. We did not plan that. <laughs> We, we had no idea what the letters were, obviously, no, because we couldn't even find the letters. You're supposed to say we did plan well, that. Okay, we <laughs> planned it, and we planned it very well. Uh, so here we go. Here's our next letter. <laughs> it's strange not having the letters <laughs> right in front of us because Catholic TV is one constant surprise. It absolutely <laughs> is. Always something new. And food for thought. Keep getting better and better. Thank you so much. And it is something, always a surprise. It's a surprise when we don't have the letters and and so on and so forth. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring you entertaining programming, showing that we celebrate the faith. We have a beautiful faith and the examples that Jesus gave us. So we just have to bring that to other people. We're, so we're feeding, we're feeding them food. We're feeding them food. Food for thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts food of food. For thoughts. And our next letter is getting up on the screen. I want you, Jay and Kevin, to know yeah. how much I enjoy you all. The three of you are a great gift. Your Easter specials a few weeks ago was a gift from God to me also. I did not know how well Kevin and his wife sing. <laughs> That's true, though. And that is, again, not planned. <laughs> uh, I, no, that one might have been planned. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't plan I that did one, in all honesty. That. I've, I've seen I you at not, work. I don't pick the letters out. Yes. But that is true. Mary has an excellent voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was a great special. I, I, I uh, you know, we were able to take the uh, Triduum and go right through it with music and uh, you know hopefully people enjoy and it. And you have a wonderful voice too. And uh, Emily, your daughter, wow. Yeah. She, she is awesome. But what a, what a nice letter. Thank you Thank very you, much. Yeah. And finally, last but not least, we have this letter. I am writing to tell you what a great comfort the Daily Mass has been to me. A, a Me medication <laughs> I began taking had an adverse effect of causing me not to be able to sleep. I, I know that all too well. I don't know how I would have gotten through the long nights without Catholic TV. It is good that it is on 24 hours a day. It must be a great blessing for many people. And thank you so much. That's a, that's a great letter. I apologize for stumbling through it, but I have to be honest. I literally started leaning over like <laughs> this, trying to, to look at it in the screen. Yeah. But uh, thanks so much. I, I can... Uh, I understand about not sleeping because I've I've had that once in a while. And that's mm -hmm. so difficult yeah. to overcome. But the letters we get, and are, you know what? I'm glad I'm glad you wrote that letter because I almost forgot. We have the prayer box here, and I don't know if it's the time of year or what it might be, but we got so many letters this week to be put into the prayer box. So I put them in. So if you sent your letter, as I said, if you sent a letter and asked us, any of us, to put it in the prayer box, I guarantee you it goes in the prayer box. Whether we mention it or not, it's going in this prayer box. So please remember the people for the prayer box. If you would like to write us, it's really easy to do, write us at Catholic TV, 34 Chestnut Street, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Or you can use the Internet, one of the many ways you can get us here at Catholic TV, at this is the day at CatholicTV.org, and Sean will be sure to get that to us. Always enjoy your letters and your emails. It makes our day, in all honesty, it makes our day. And I do apologize. I'm not always that quick getting back to people. Uh, we're very busy, yep, but, yep. but we do try as best we can. Well, joining us now are Mac and Catherine Barron, who are podcasters and, better yet, great parents. Uh, how are you guys doing? Hello. Good morning. Oh, there you are. Look at you guys. <laughs> so professional, too. So professional. 
We were wait. We were we were told Father Reed would be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We get that reaction a lot when people don't see Father Reed. They're very disappointed, and I can understand I can that. All the, all the old Jewish Catholic ladies going. I just wanted Father Reed there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, guys. Hey, I have to tell you, I love the professional too with the the windscreen there for the mic. Just looking good. We try to maintain a certain <laughs> level of professionalism up here. Yeah, we try, we try for up here, but it usually, yeah, it ends up somewhere around here. Hey, Catherine, please tell us about your podcast, Catholics in a Small Town. Well, um, we just talk about faith. We talk about our family. Usually spend about 20 minutes talking about our family. We have three little boys that we, uh, they give us lots of fodder for, uh, <laughs> for funny bits. And any movies or books or video games or podcasts we're listening to, we'll review and usually try to talk about what's family friendly, what's not family friendly, and why we liked them, why we didn't. And then we uh, talk about some emails and usually try to bring it all around at the end with uh, what's going on with our Catholic faith and um, how maybe something in the news or something at Mass, you know, how that impacted us and, and how that um, impacts our Catholic faith. Well, Mac, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about how this all started. Uh, when did this idea start, and how did it come to fruition? Well, you know the, the old adage about, if you build it, they will come. I think Steve Jobs understands that better than anybody <laughs> else. And one day, um, a new version of iTunes popped onto my iMac, and it had a shiny purple podcast button. And so I immediately typed in Catholic and found things like the Catholic Insider and the Rosary Army with Greg and Jennifer. And uh, I started listening to these guys and thought, you know what, I can do that. We can do that. We would be great. And Catherine and I are both from Protestant evangelical backgrounds. And growing up that way, you know, we go on mission trips and stuff. And, and we kind of settled into a place where we have this fire inside us. We have this faith we want to share, but we just really don't know how to do that in our community or how to go out and do that. And all of a sudden, the technology with the will, with the faith, just kind of coalesced into a golden opportunity. And it, and it really gave it, I think we surprised ourselves mm -hmm. how we wanted to make it about something significant, even though we love to talk about movies more than anything else <laughs> in the world. But we needed to make it worth something. And the, the faith was a natural way to, to make all that happen. And, and I remember the very first show, Catherine kind of looked over at me like, who is this person talking about <laughs> Christ in our lives? You know, like we have the conversations, but we don't share them with others. And this, this really allowed us to do that in a comfortable way that seems to touch people. You know, it's interesting you say that because, you know, it's, it's all of our responsibilities to evangelize. And yet I think sometimes as Catholics, and, and you probably have seen this all too well, people are afraid sometimes to talk about their faith. You talk about the reaction. Has the reaction been strong? Well, I think we're, we're sort of constantly overwhelmed by the emails, and we don't get, mm. you know, 20 thousand, emails a day yeah, or something. We don't, we don't get that kind of thing, but every week, two or three or sometimes ten will come in, and they'll just touch your heart. They'll say, yeah. you know, this may not mean anything to you guys, but when you guys pop into my, my iPod, I know there are real people that are struggling like me that want to talk about their faith and, and that bolster me through my week. And well, so you, you don't know what you've done for us, but you have, and that's, that's what they say. I think we've been mostly surprised by um, the how far away, like Germany or we, Singapore, Singapore <laughs> Australia, like how far away the people that listen to our podcast are. And we think, well, gosh, we're you know in a very small town in South Georgia, and it's, it's odd that people even across the, the, you know, the world can relate to us you know, in this small little area. You'll have to start doing it in different languages now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> now, what's it She's like? Uh, mess up the house <laughs> on every continent. That's what we figured out. <laughs> That's right. What's it like uh, working together? Uh, uh, how long have you been doing this now? And, and talk about working that uh, together as a, as a team, as a, sp a spouse team. And uh, what's that like? Well, I think uh, actually this Sunday or this coming week, because our, our, we're having our 12th anniversary of marriage uh, on congratulations. Sunday. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Sucker. I, so, <laughs> 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 so it'll be five years, five years Excellent. ago, 2006. So well, isn't, cool. isn't the 12th uh, diamonds, flowers, car, a new <laughs> car? Isn't it all of that? I, I think that's true. I, I think the 12th is you need to shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Usually <laughs> uh, it's my wife saying that. <laughs> working together. This is just like home. This is great. <laughs> sometimes it uh, 
sometimes it flows so so brilliantly and it's we assume it is the holy spirit that's sort of helping us and other times mostly it's me that i'll say something and Catherine will look over at me like that's off limits you don't bring that up in front of people right now you know or so we'll have disagreements like uh you i don't know if you guys are watching if anybody in your booth was watching but just just about two minutes before you came before we came on Kevin's running around the house putting in earrings going, I just has the mail come today? You know, that seat's too small for me. You're too high. And I'm like, just sit down. You know, so it has its ups and downs. Oh, no, we actually put that on. We, we just put it on and live streamed it all over our Internet so people could watch, <laughs> you know, Catherine run around. Well, listen, where can people find out more about your podcast? Well, you can download it free at iTunes. Just type in Catholic in a small town. That's Catholic, not Catholics. Mm -hmm. Very and good. Go ahead, keep. I'm sorry, keep going, Mac. I didn't know you. There's more. Go. And and uh, Catherine has set up a Facebook account for Catholic in a Small Town that we we put out posts. Uh, sometimes we use stream as well as record, and so people can watch us record live. And unfortunately, there's no set schedule because there's no set schedule for our lives. Um, <laughs> so we 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 put out a ping uh, to let everybody on the Facebook uh, account and Twitter accounts know that um, that we're about to record and again sometimes they can watch us and sometimes you just have to wait for us to appear we, we do have the fan page but um, if you can you can friend either Mac or I usually me because Mac doesn't really do Facebook very much <laughs> and so you can look up Catherine Bear and you can you can friend me and if you'll just put a little message in you know CST fan or um, Catholic in a small town fan and um, then I'll put you in our little SQPN uh, podcasting box and then you'll get all those little pings well, we really appreciate, you know, we do a lot of these, and I have to admit, this one, this one has been a lot of fun. So we, we really enjoyed it. Have a great anniversary. Thanks for joining us. And I know that you'll be seeing some of our friends very soon. So have a great day. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, Kevin has moved very quickly over to his new set. Kevin, how are you doing over there? Doing good, Jay. It actually yeah. sounded like there was some ruckus going on over there. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it sounded yeah. like things were falling. Yeah, some, everything okay? Some crazy guy with a ladder just walked through the studio. Oh, was that Charles? <laughs> was Charles over there with a ladder? Yeah. yeah, things happen. Kevin, what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? All right, thanks, Jay. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. We begin from the Vatican. During a Mass celebrating the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ at the Basilica of St. John Lateran, Pope Benedict XVI said the transformation of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ is like the transformation people undergo when they give themselves up to the love of God. The Pope said that by partaking in the Eucharist, Christians become like Christ because they are part of his body, one with him. He referenced the Last Supper where Jesus overturned the meaning of death by the changing of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ and creating the gift of love that is stronger than death. Pope Benedict said communion underscores the social commitment inherent in the church because whoever recognized Christ in the host also sees him in his brother who is suffer, who is hungry or thirsty or who is alone, naked, sick or imprisoned. He said recognition and commitment to help others is important in a world where globalization makes everyone more dependent upon each other. After the Mass, the Pope led the traditional Corpus Christi procession from St. John Lateran to the Basilica of St. Mary Major for Eucharistic adoration and benediction. In other news from the Vatican, during this week's general audience, the Pope arrived wearing his bright red straw hat in hopes of beating the heat. He continued his talk on prayer and said that starting August 3rd, when the next general audience takes place, he will focus on a psalm each Wednesday. There will be no Wednesday audiences for the rest of June and all of July. Catholic News Service has more from Rome on the Pope's words. Pope Benedict held his weekly general audience outside in St. Peter's Square. A large crowd of about 10,000 people turned out despite the scorching sun and high temperatures. The Pope braved the heat with his red straw hat. In his catechesis, the Pope again looked at the importance of prayer and how the Book of Psalms teaches us how to speak to God. There are psalms of humble petition, he said, or of praise addressed to a loving God who understands human frailty. The Pope said a prayer of praise is the best way to speak to God, who never leaves our side, even during times of great difficulty or suffering. The Pope called on everyone to open up the book of Psalms and to let God, through Christ, teach everyone how to pray and to pray every day. 
Looking at news now from around the world, an aid package has been developed to boost church support for Japan's recovery and reconstruction efforts in the two dioceses most severely affected by March's massive earthquake. Developed during Japan's bishops' plenary assembly, the aid package calls for the country's remaining 14 dioceses to participate in reconstruction assistance for the church in Sendai and Saitama diocese. Adoption of the package formalizes the Catholic Bishops' Conference uh, of, of Japan's policy of having a coordinated nationwide earthquake relief effort within the church in effect since late May. The conference also established an office for reconstruction assistance to coordinate communication with the various ecclesiastical provinces, religious orders, and mission societies in the region. For three years, the Bishops' Conference will send $373,000 annually to the Sendai Diocese with the Saitama Diocese They'll receive just over $124,000 per year. In news now from around the country, on June 28th, Bishop Howard Hubbard of Albany will preside at the closing liturgy for the tribunal formed for the review of a possible medical miracle attributed to the intercession of sainthood candidate Father Patrick Payton. The tribunal has done a thorough investigation and the findings will now be forwarded to the Congregation of the Causes of the Saints in Rome. At this point, details of the possible miracle cannot be released, but it's said to have been a man in his 60s facing life-threatening multiple organ failure. His family prayed to Father Peyton and they strongly felt that he was healed through intercessory prayer. According to Father John Phelan, president of the Holy Cross Family Ministries, the organization originally founded by the sainthood candidate, the medical community has offered information to support the family's belief. Father Peyton, of course, well known for his rosary crusades and famous saying, the family that prays together stays together. The closing liturgy will be held at St. Vincent de Paul Church in Albany, New York at 12 noon. And finally in the news, Hearts on Fire Catholic Young Adult Retreat Program could be coming to a city near you this summer. The retreats are for young adults age 18 to 39, married or single, and are focused on trying to connect faith to everyday life. They are based on the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius and the spirituality of the group. Jesuit Father Phil Hurley is the National Youth and Young Adult Director of the Apostleship of Prayer, a Jesuit association leading the Hearts on Fire retreats. He said that it's a crucial time in young adults' lives. They are at a place in their life that they can make decisions soon and take action on it right away and make a big difference. The Apostleship of Prayer shares their ideas of making a morning offering, living the Eucharist, and ending the day with an evening review with retreat participants. Young adults are also given the chance to socialize during meal times in a coffee house social. If you'd like more information about Hearts on Fire Retreat Program, you can go to their website at apostleshipofprayer.org slash heartsonfire. And that is all the information we have for you this Friday, June 24th, 2011. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back with more of This is the Day in just a moment. I wish I had known. Nobody told me that 40 years of research and 28 medical studies have shown a significant link between abortion and breast cancer. I didn't know abortion could increase my risk of breast cancer by 50% or more. Now, I've got breast cancer and learned the abortion I had when I was 17 was a major risk factor. I want to let other women know because I would give anything to have known. Whether you're pregnant or had an abortion, learn the facts today. It's been said men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other institution. We developed the scientific method and founded the college system. We defend the dignity of human life and uphold marriage. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition. 
which have guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, sharing in the sacraments and fullness of the Christian faith. Jesus started our church when he said to Peter, the first pope, you are rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. So if you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit catholicscomehome.org today. We are Catholic. Welcome home. And we are back, and Kevin is back, so we're all back. I hope you're back. I hope you stayed with us. If you hear this, you certainly are. You know, we talk about the summer, and it's it's just about, it's here, right? It's is it just about here? Yeah, I think officially it's, it's this past week, uh, what was the longest 21st? day? The 21st was 21st? the longest day. Is yeah. that the longest day? Yeah. yeah. How, well, how so we're here in the summer, and I, as you might know, I've been at Catholic TV for, for a few years. Long. A long, yeah. long time. time. A long, long time. Yeah. And during the summer, it used to be actually a time where we would regroup somewhat. Uh, we'd continue doing things, but we'd regroup. It's not that way anymore. We have a lot of production going on this summer. Yeah, you can't regroup anymore. No regrouping. It's just <laughs> go straight ahead. It was fun. I, I, I can't help now. I just saw my face. <laughs> we were talking about this in between the break, but Jay's got that little makeup thing going yeah, on. Yeah, because of high definition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm a little red. I don't have the makeup, so my Irish red skin's coming through. <laughs> like that. That's why at the very beginning <laughs> of the show I started laughing, <laughs> because we look so different in this. <laughs> and uh, actually, Charles, get a two shot. Look, yeah. Look <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Woo, wow, I look like I got a good tan and I, you look... I'm blending in with the background, the <laughs> you, skyline. There. You are. You are doing something. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. And now that you're laughing, it's going to get worse. <laughs> But we have a yeah. busy summer. We have a lot Speaking of Speaking of the summer. Yeah, we've got yeah. a, yeah, don't get sunburned <laughs> yeah. out there, please. Use, please don't get sunburned. Use 15 or greater, <laughs> SPF. But yeah, we, we, I mean, we have uh, Professor Ann Orlando who's coming in. Uh, we actually have uh, another teaching series, uh, the uh, Gospel of Mark uh, with... Uh, Professor Clabeau, he's going to be yep. in uh, doing that as well. And also the the uh, new Roman Missal, a lot of people mm -hmm. have questions about that. That's uh, going to be implemented at the uh, start of Advent this year. So um, we're going to have uh, uh, Monsignor uh, Mooney, I believe, coming in to do that. Maroney. Maroney. Yep. Uh, and uh, he's going to be talking about the, that and about what to expect for that. So uh, that's just a little taste of it. That's going to, oh, I know, yeah. because then we have our other series, Way of Beauty yeah. and, of course, everything. We, uh, we've got to talk, so on and so forth, going my way. I, see, now I'm in trouble. So yeah. I start, I'm not going to name anymore. Gonna I'm just going to say right now, if I forgot your series, I didn't forget it. It's just that my mind is slipping as I get older, so. <laughs> It's hard for me to remember them all. But I have to tell you, I think the missile one in particular is going to be huge yeah. because people do have a lot of questions, and he is the number one, Father's the number one authority. Father Maroney is the number one authority on that. So that should be awesome. Excellent. And, of course, as you said, the telethon machine has yeah, revved yeah, back up. Getting, getting going, yeah. You ready? Yeah. No, <laughs> not yet. Yeah, and then yeah. we have Knights of Columbus. That's and right. And we have World Knights Youth Day. Yeah. And so there's but we don't have a time for this show. we got to get going. Thank you so much for joining us today, and watch us next week and know all of you in our thoughts and in our prayers. Have a great day. <laughs>